All right, man. So we're going to talk about three ways to increase the passion in your marriage. I'm here with my wife, Jessica. And the ladies. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about three ways we can increase passion in our marriage. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Number one. No, we have to figure out who goes first. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Three, best out of three. No, first no, the first one. Okay. Oh, that was not okay, okay, right. Okay. No, no. Oh my gosh. Yeah, one, okay. two, three. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> No, you didn't do it. I did do it. Okay, Okay, I'm going, gosh, that took way too long. So six ways to create passion, connection, intimacy. One could be to play games or touch, but we won't talk about those today. Um, But ladies, like seriously, and tell me how this would go the best way. I feel like the first thing that you could do that I neglected for a very long time was the sexy selfie. I mean, like, are you sending like, and not the sexy selfie that looks like this, like, but the one like that's in the cute new lingerie, like, I feel like if those were being sent, you'd have unlimited budgets for things that you actually want, (laughs) right? Are you kidding me? Right? Yes. Any pro tips on what that... It's great. No, I love I love it when you're, yeah, you're open. You share your, I mean, I think you're the most beautiful woman. So I love to see you, however that looks, whether it's at home, if I'm at work or, uh, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. So mm-hmm. well, yeah, sexy well, selfies. Talking about scene, do you want to do yours or my second one? Uh, I'll go with mine. Take the reins. So for yours, it was sexy selfies. For me, it's take the reins. take the whips earlier. No, take the reins, the okay. reins. Okay. So taking the reins. So men, what can you do to increase uh, intimacy is, you know what? Start to start to own the responsibility in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Schedule the date nights. Uh, choose the restaurant. Uh, your wife wants to be taken by you. She doesn't want to be the one leading you. It's the most unattractive thing is when your wife has to lead you around and get, tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Man, own it. Start leading. Start taking the reins. Start choosing where you're going uh, and, and really take ownership over that. I think that was a big thing for us is you, you asked me, hey, I want you to lead. Yeah. And I want to lead. So it was a good win-win. Yeah. But it's not when like, you know, I had just cooked polenta for the first time and um, we're trying it and Skylar's like, it was so watery. Mom, was what do you think about this polenta? What'd she do wrong? So that's not taking the reins, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, in, you know, like, or even bringing your mom into that. that not, that's the, that's a, that's a no go zone. No yeah. fly zone yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Babe, this, this is awesome. My mom happened to be there. I asked her what she thought of the polenta, but anyway. Let me get third-party validation that you suck, Jessica. Number two. Okay, number (laughs) two. So speaking of visual attraction, right, walking around um, naked. Like when was the last time? Even if you have kids, like maybe the kids are gone or can, can you get the kids outside? Like does your husband get to like see your body? And like do you have like a strut that you get to do through the house? But I mean, is it a sexy selfie, the strut, like does that make you feel full or like what does that provoke in a man like when his wife is willing to kind of just show up in that way like why why should they do it because they're like "Eh, i don't want to well we're visual creatures men especially so we just love to see and so if we're married and we're going to be married to somebody the rest of our lives we love to mix it up and have fun so yeah if you if you can be naked in the house or in lingerie or in something hot that turns us on and that's fun and playful for us like that's that's different than just having a, you know, an hour long conversation with you, right? I'd rather, I'd rather visually see you. Mm, yeah. That's number two. Number two, be vulnerable. So for a man, right, the thing we're most of the time not willing to do, there's a, there's a, there's a saying, what you're most looking to find is where you're least likely wanting to go, right? And so if you want sexual intimacy, it starts with emotional intimacy. So being willing to be vulnerable and be authentic and and really bring all of yourself to a conversation. So I, I feel like all the times we've had our most authentic conversations and our passion increased the most is when I shared something that I normally wouldn't want to share, mm-hmm. an insecurity or a fear or something going on inside of my heart that makes me feel weak, but it's really what's going on inside of me. And when I share that vulnerability, it connects with your heart. And then we're able to connect. And from that moment, like we've had some of our most intense passion when I was willing to go there and be vulnerable and be real and raw. And I was willing to receive it, right? Because yeah. if he's going to share something like that and I make the conversation about me or I push back on it or I try and solve it, it'll halt any desire for him to be vulnerable ever, right? And so that doesn't look like, babe, your butt looks big, right? Like, or, oh, I don't like that outfit. That's not vulnerable. That might be your truth in the moment, but that is not going to create the vulnerability and connection that you desire. 
Why do you got to bring up my old conversations? <laughs> I was, I'm growing and I'm learning, babe. Okay. I wasn't saying you, I was saying them. I was playing. And so ladies, number three on our side, like when was the last time that you whispered into your husband's ear what you were going to do to him later or like what your plans were or just an intimate desire that you had and just like um, created um, this mystery and created excitement and created connection, knowing that it's not going to happen right then. Not even that it has to happen that night, but when was the last time like like you spoke in that way, right, to him? Yeah. I would call I would call that bringing in playfulness, almost sexual playfulness, right? Yeah, kind of having fun and flirting and, and mm-hmm. that stuff. I love it when you do that, right? That increases our intimacy and our connection, and it's fun, and I love it. So that's great. Number three, invest regularly. So this is something that is challenging for a lot of men, especially men that are busy, right? We're focused. We got to take care of the kids. We got sport. We don't take care. We got to make sure the kids are taken care of at night or maybe helping. Hopefully you're helping out with the kids. Uh, You got sports. You have work. You have all these things. And how do you regularly invest with your wife? So it might look like getting her flowers on a weekly basis or writing her a love note or uh, spending one-on-one time in the morning. But how can you do something daily where you're connecting with your wife and filling her cup up? Because I know it's true for Jessica. Her cup reduces pretty fast throughout the week. So if I'm not investing and spending time, your cup is going down. Mm -hmm. And then when I have to go make a withdrawal, right? When I'm investing, if I don't invest, but then I make a withdrawal, that's where our relationship starts to get very uh, touchy. Mm -hmm. But if I'm regularly investing and keeping your cup full, it keeps the passion there. She wants to do more for me. She wants to connect with me Mm -hmm. uh, intimately. But if if I'm just withdrawing, right, working long hours... There's no need for her, no desire for her to do that. And so ladies, like as he's done that, I've had to really check myself in, am I receiving it or am I wanting it to look my way? So a great example is uh, last week he had his assistant plan part of our date night and the old me would have been like, well, you didn't do it. So it doesn't count for you. I thought you didn't know about that. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) you didn't do it. So it doesn't count for you. Like you don't get the points because somebody else did it. And so like, am I more concerned with how he's doing it and investing or more concerned with the outcome that we get to connect together? Or like, it's because I hear wives say, well, oh, he's just doing it because it's a task. Right. But is he right? Because he actually took the time to do whatever it was. And maybe it didn't look the exact way But like, that's a man that's showing up and trying to invest. And it's easy sometimes to have our ways that we want it to look and discount things that they're doing when they're actually moving towards us and trying to invest. It's interesting. Yeah. We, uh, I have conversations with guys a lot and their wives get upset because now they've scheduled date night on the calendar and they have a recurring calendar appointment and their wives say, Hey, why does it want to be an appointment on your calendar? Right. And then, and then, uh, but that's priority, that, right? That, yeah. If you're on my calendar, you're a priority. If you're not on my calendar, yeah. you're not a priority. So, yeah. like, the best thing, if you can get on my calendar, that's a, that's a top thing. So, if you're on my list, that means I care about you. If I'm willing to write it down and, and be intentional with those things. And for men, we need to do that. It just doesn't come naturally. We just get distracted. And so, we got to have a list. We got to have something we can kind of work off of to remember to, to stay present. It doesn't mean we don't care. It just, we just need a, a couple extra tools to make sure we stay focused because we have a lot going on, right? Women can handle, women can handle a lot more. Guys, we're, we're single minded. And so if we're going to be managing five things, we need to at least to have a list mm-hmm. to stay on track. Mm-hmm. No, we need lists too, no. for sure. So um, if you got any value out of this or you think that you're, you'd want your spouse to watch this so they could see the other side of it, rather than just shooting it over, like what could you say? So like, cause if like if Skylar sure. sent me this video and the wife was talking about send a sexy selfie, walk around naked, whisper in his ear, what, you know, what you want to do later. Like, I'd be like, dude, like, are you kidding me? Like, this is trash. Right. Um, but, so, but is there a way that you can engage them in it? Right. Like, and through sending this express your commitment to having an amazing marriage. Right. So if Skylar just sent this and said, Hey babe, I want you to do more of that. Right. It, like it wouldn't mean as much as if he said, Hey, like this reminded me, like, I want to show up in this way. And I would love it if you showed up in this way more, like how can we have the most passionate, intimate, connected marriage possible? So make sure before you send it, you you're intentional with how you send it to your spouse. Great. If you're not following or not subscribed, definitely do so for more great, great stuff.